Kita kau mahu tahu tak sebenarnya kura-kura sangat suka diberuskan dia orang punya cengkerang. Sebab cengkerang dia orang ni technically adalah eh melampau pula dia nak. Sebab cengkerang dia ni sebenarnya adalah dia orang punya tulang belakang dan juga tulang rusuk. Jadi ada nerve ending dekat situ. Bila kita gosok dia orang dapat rasa sebenarnya. Jadi kalau kita tengok kan ah, macam inilah gambar rajah dia orang dengan dia orang punya cengkerang. Macam dia orang sorokkan kepala betul tak? <laughs> so dia kena cengkerang. <laughs> Saya so, yeah, kalau awak ada kura-kura ke apa ke kena rajinlah gosok dong dia belakang okay they like it Dance before and after Selective breathing I like that fat it's that face on your face I work like a dog day and night such a freak in the <laughs> Not when I spent my entire life loving Jack Johnny like one of you No one The Stone Age isn't isolated to humans and it's actually well documented in science that macaques, capuchins and chimps have all entered a Stone Age of their own. But first let's talk about the young Michael Schofield you just saw. That happened in China in 2019 and tourists that day said they'd observed this monkey sharpening that rock before hitting the glass pane. They also said it came back after initially being scared and observed the glass feeling it. Archaeological evidence for this stone tool use goes back over 3000 years. In one recent study, they observed wild monkeys using these rocks. Out of 302 attempts, 253 started with the line marking the nut's stable axis facing up. They know what they're doing. Now it is also important to note that the stone age is a very broad term. This doesn't mean monkeys are going to be making weapons in the next 20 years. It took humans almost 3 million years based on the evidence we have to go from that basic stone tool use to where we are today. The facts are they're intelligent enough to use an anvil and use a large rock to break things with that anvil. That action does produce sharp flakes, but they haven't been observed using those sharp flakes to cut yet. Some hypothesize this could have been a big step with our ancestors though, where the stone flakes weren't intentional at first, but were later used as the intelligence group. Scientists have been able to fertilize eggs without sperm, which means eventually women will not need So in the end part of this video he says that men will naturally go extinct in the next few thousand years. The scary fact here is that male fertility is already decreasing in warmer climate areas, like Arizona, USA, right now is going through a massive heat wave. Sperm cannot survive if the temperature rises higher than around 36 or 37 Celsius degrees. It will die or the quality will remarkably decrease. And that's why Mother Nature invented testicles to keep the sperm out of the body because the body temperature is often too high for the sperm to thrive. You can only imagine what happens to the sperm when the outside temperature rises even higher than 48 degrees, like right now in Arizona. If we don't fight climate change, we will go extinct. That's basic biology. For all my new followers, I want to run through a bunch of true things and a bunch of not true things to make sure we're all on the same page scientifically. On the true side, we've got evolution. This is something that we have mountains and mountains of evidence proving. Even if we never found a single fossil, we would still have overwhelming evidence showing that evolution is true. On the other side, we've got races. This is something that makes no sense at all. There's actually more genetic variation within what you would call a race than there is between them, so it's just completely arbitrary lines that aren't backed by science. Over here, we've got LGBT validity. Trans men are men, trans women are women, homosexuality is normal and natural and found all throughout nature, and then over here, we've got the whole gender binary system. Again, just arbitrary nonsense lines, completely made up, make no real sense. On the true side, we've got the Big Bang. This is another one that we have immense amounts of evidence proving we could lose a lot of it and still have proof. And on the other side, I just don't want to talk about creationism today, man, so I'm just going to throw in spanking kids. Again, overwhelming evidence shows a cause of trauma. You did not, in fact, turn out fine. I had an idea for a new series while at the Sternberg Museum today. Stories from the fossil record, talking about some of the moments that were frozen in time, starting with the fish within a fish. This fossil, excavated by the famous George Sternberg in Gove County, Kansas in 1952, features an 80 million year old 14 foot long Xyphactinus. 
Not only was this specimen the most complete of its kind, it also contained a six-foot-long gillicus, a fish that the Xyphactinus had swallowed head first. However, its eyes were larger than its stomach, and that decision turned out to be fatal for both parties. Because the gillicus shows little signs of digestion, scientists believe the Xyphactinus died very shortly after engulfing it possibly due to the six-foot-long gillicus injuring its attacker posthumously. The story isn't over there, though. The dead Xyphactinus was not preyed upon or even scattered around by sharks or other scavengers, indicating that it was rapidly buried, meaning some natural catastrophe must have happened shortly after their death. Whatever happened, a seemingly unimportant moment in time led to the two individuals being intertwined forever. And you thought he was cute before. Look at this peacoat, tell me he's broke. Woo! And I know you ain't into all that. I heard your lyrics, I feel your spirit, but I Biology, how broad. I love it. <laughs> all right, so before jumping in, I do want to ask, are you fine with everyone assuming you want to be a doctor, whether or not that's actually the case? Great. And second question, how much do you love taking quizzes? Because <laughs> it's basically going to be that in labs for the next one to ten years, depending on how quickly we break you. <laughs> but if you do manage to make it through a PhD program without a single crack, then you're a sociopath, plain and simple. All right, let's go ahead and get you signed up for at least 20 credits. Those labs do add up. Oh, and if you're choosing this major to feel smart, uh, only make friends with people outside of science. Yeah, unfortunately, none of the other sciences are ever going to respect you. But look on the bright side. You could be a social science. And maybe someday you'll be a doctor. I was today years old when I found out. Humans inherit mitochondrial DNA only from the mother. So in order to pass on empty DNA from generation to generation, the mother must have an unbroken link of female descendants. Unlike nuclear DNA, which undergoes recombination, much of empty DNA is passed from mother to daughter, relatively unchanged. If we take a sample of empty DNA from a population and try to reconstruct their matrilineal ancestry using the very slow mutation rate of empty DNA, we might arrive at a single female common ancestor, a mother whom we can all relate to from our mother's side. This is exactly what Can, Stone King, and Wilson did in 1987 and found out that, in fact, all humans alive today do have a common female ancestor who probably lived about 200,000 years ago in Africa. They named her Mitochondrial Eve, 